Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about something called a wrapper. And essentially what a wrapper does is that it creates a container that we can take all the content of our website and put it inside of. Then by using the wrapper, we can then tell the website where we want the content to start, where we want it to end, and where we want to position the content. So you can either put everything on the left side of the screen, you can center it, or you can put it on the right side of the screen. So to kind of give you guys an example of what I mean, I do actually have Amazon.com open here. And as you guys will notice is that most websites out there do actually have this invisible box that all the content has been put inside of. So as you guys can see, I do actually have everything highlighted here. And you can kind of imagine that on the left side here, there's like a straight line going down. And then on the right side, we have a straight line going down where all the content stays inside of. So that's essentially what a wrapper does. So the way we create it is, well, first of all, a wrapper is used typically many different places on a website. So we can use it inside the header to, you know, tell all the content inside the header where it needs to stay. We can also use it inside the section. We can use it as inside the footer. We can use it many different places, which means that when we create the wrapper, we're going to go ahead and give it a name and it has to be a class name because like I mentioned in the last episode, a class name can be used many different times. So we can use the same wrapper multiple times. So to kind of get started here, I'm going to go ahead and create a div box that goes outside my header tags. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my div before the header starts, and I'm going to close it after the header. Then I have to give it the name by writing out class inside the opening div tag equal to quotation marks. And then I'm going to call it wrapper. Now I don't have to call a wrapper, but it's just a typical thing to call it. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to go into my style sheet because right now our div is not actually styled yet. It doesn't know what to do. So we need to make it behave like a wrapper by styling it. So inside the style sheet, I'm going to go ahead and go on top of my header code because I like to put my wrapper code at the very top because it's used many different times on the website. So it doesn't really belong anything spe anywhere specifically in the hierarchy. So I just like to put it in the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and refer to a class by writing punctuation. So we have a class called wrapper. Then we're going to open up the code. And then we need to add two different elements or like two different pieces of code. We need to tell it what width it should have and we need to tell it where it needs to be positioned. So the width that we're going to write here depends on what you think the website should have of a width. So the typical thing is actually 960 pixels. But it, it really depends on how big you want your website wrapper to be. Um, if you take the example again, you can see that Amazon does actually have, you know, a, a specific width for the wrapper. We could make it larger so that the content goes all the way over here to this side, or we could make it even smaller so everything stays inside right here. It really does depend on what you think. Now I should keep in like I should mention that some browsers, like some computers, are not big enough. Let's say a small laptop. You can't really view a website that has a wrapper that is really, really big, like let's say 1,300 pixels wide, because it's just not going to fit inside some computers. So we need to keep it at, like my rule of thumb is no bigger than 1,200 pixels. But then again, some websites are ex or like some computers are actually smaller than that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So the width we're going to give this wrapper is 960, because it's just a typical thing, like I said. Now, the position is we're going to position this in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to give it a margin colon of zero auto, which means that we are telling it that we wanted zero pixels from the top. We want it to automatically look on the side, you know, how much space is available. Then we wanted zero pixels again from the bottom. And then we wanted to take the left side and then tell it you know how much space is available and then kind of calculate from the left and right side how much space is available and where does it need to be to be in the center so you know it, it might not have made sense the way i just said it but when you write uh, spacing this way by only using two different parameters so like two different variables um, it typically goes from the top right bottom left which means that when we write two variables we say top right, bottom, left in this order. We could also just write it like this, which is essentially the same like this. 
this is exactly the same thing because like I said, it takes top, right, bottom, left. Okay, so this is how I create a wrapper. And if I go ahead and save this and then refresh the browser of our website, you'll notice that suddenly our header becomes, you know, only a small part of the website and it actually stays inside the wrapper. And because we put the header as 100% width, 100% of the container it's inside of is right now the wrapper, which is 960 pixels. So it's not going to be 100% of the t uh, total width of the browser that we have open here. So just to kind of show this as an example, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take the wrapper inside the index.html sheet, and we're going to take the opening tag of the div and move it inside our header tag. So on the other side of the header tag, and then we're going to take the closing of the wrapper and move it just before the closing of the header tag, like so. Then we're going to take all the, the content inside the wrapper and just kind of move it up once so it looks nice. If I save it now, the only thing that should stay inside the wrapper should be the image and the nav tags that we haven't really styled yet. So if I refresh the browser, you'll notice that only the image stays inside the wrapper, which is what we were looking for. So this is what we use a wrapper for. And now anything I put inside this wrapper tag is going to stay within a certain border, which is what we want. So this is what I wanted to teach you guys in this episode. In the next one, we're going to talk about classes and divs, or no, like classes and IDs specifically, because I feel like we really need to talk these through since we use them a lot when we make websites. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.